All right, the, the study that I want to look at tonight is part two of another one that I offered called Foundation of the World. And there's a lot uh, of information packed in here, I, I believe. Uh, but first of all, I want to go back and review the, yeah, I want to go back and review the, uh, and Lord willing, I think you guys will find this interesting. Uh, I want to look at the conclusion that I offered from the last study. Let me see if I can post that. Okay. And what I concluded there... One second. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, but... So the Bible appears to be equating foundation of the world with Christ himself. So he is the foundation. He is the everlasting foundation, the beginning and the end. The world seems to point to the kingdom itself on the church where gold, silver, precious stone, and so on are built. The elect were chosen from the foundation of the world in Christ and eternity past according to God's foreknowledge. Uh, that I believe is true, but I want to take it one step further tonight and, and see if we can expand that. Uh, Christ slain from the foundation of the world and appears to relate to the certainty of the prophesied atonement. Now, as I said, God might have in view a, uh, the beginning, the very uh, start of creation. Yeah, yeah, I think you're, you're on the right track there, Eric. And that's the aspect, that's the part of it that I missed uh, the last time. And I think it's, uh, we'll take a look at Okay, we'll look at the, uh, the foundation of the world from two vantage points, from the vantage point of time and uh, the nature of it. So nature and time. And you'll see what I mean, hopefully. Uh, foundation of the world, the body of Christ. It also includes Christ. Uh, the wheat, remember the body is two-part. Wheat and tares, let them grow together until the harvest. Foundation of the world, the body of Christ, being the wheat, Isaiah 28, verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay in Zion a, a stone, a tried stone, a precious stone, a cornerstone, a sure foundation. So we know that. I'm not going to spend too much time on these verses. Uh, some of this is review, I believe. Uh, Christ is the foundation. So we're looking at the salvation side of the foundation. Yeah. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Christ is the rock. He is also the foundation. Right? Matthew 16, verse 18. And I also say unto thee, thou art Peter, and Peter typifying Christ, his name is Rock, upon this rock, that is Christ, not Peter. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, any questions so far? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. Stay with me. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. The foundation of the earth. Christ is the foundation. Like I said, uh, I'm positive I'm pretty certain that God also has you know creation that is a literal creation but we want to go beyond that we want to try to look at the substance uh, whether spiritual is uh, God speaks in parables and then there I think we'll see something interesting uh, so the foundation of the earth which is Christ first uh, Timothy 6 verse 19 laying up in store for themselves a good foundation who is that Again, that's Christ. God is good. Christ is the foundation. Ephesians 2, verse 20. If I'm going too fast, uh, please stop me. Let me know. Because like I said, uh, some of this should be reviewed. Eric posted Ephesians 2. <laughs> wow, what a coincidence. I just posted the same verse. I think you saw that coming, right? Uh, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Yeah. Perfect timing. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yeah, but thanks for uh, sharing that. 
uh, 1 Corinthians 3.10 According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another built it thereupon or thereon. So the foundation is laid. And we know that spiritually that has to be talking about Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11 for now take a look at this we're gonna you know I'll see if I can expand on this a little more in a few minutes for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ so that's how we know that Christ is the foundation 1 Corinthians 3 verse 12 now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones who are they Wouldn't that be the those who come out of Babylon, those that are saved, the elect, Christ? So we have to be careful how we build on this foundation. Are we building gold, silver, precious stones, uh, a type of the elect, or wood, hay, stubble? Notice that it's all on the same foundation, right? So the foundation is laid, that is Christ, and then now we have to be careful how we build on this foundation John 17 24 for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world and again I think it is creation well it is talking about the creation of of the body of Christ that's what I I, I missed the last time when I was looking at these verses uh, although I had it in the back of my mind but I, I was not finding the, uh, the the verses the right verses to support it are you <laughs> yeah, are you building Babylon? Exactly, Eric. Okay. Uh, so, thou lovest me before Christ, before the creation of the world. And the world, we know symbolically, it is the church. So, it's also, it has to be spiritually relating to uh, before the creation of the body of Christ, the corporate body. When did that happen? We'll, we'll come to that. All right, hold that thought. We'll come to that. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth uh, the spirit of men within him. So God, again, you know, talking about the heaven, uh, stretching the heavens, God is forming the spirit of man. Uh, literally, yeah, uh, that took place from the very beginning. We don't know. God made the, the earth and the heavens, but spiritually, I think it is also pointing to the the formation of the body of Christ, the corporate body. Ezra chapter 3, verse 12. Stay with me. Uh, but many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house. Now God is getting into another house. Well, it is the same house. It is still Christ. Uh, but rather than the foundation of the world, we're looking at the foundation of, of the house. So can you begin to see a uh, similarity there? The foundation of this house. I have laid the foundation. So the foundation of the world, I think, is the same as the foundation of, of the house. That makes sense? Second Chronicles 8.16 Now all the work of Solomon was prepared unto the day of the of the foundation of the house of the Lord and until it was finished and then one more verse in this category Zechariah chapter 4 verse 9 the hands of Zerubbabel now Zerubbabel I think he was uh, the leader in uh, one of the exiles or the exiles from Babylon and so here in this context I forget what the name Zerubbabel uh, stands for. Uh, something having to do with Babylon. But in the context, though, it is pointing to salvation, I believe, because he was leading the people. Yeah. He was uh, leading the people out of Babylon, and then he, I guess he was uh, involved in uh, restoring Jerusalem. So the context here, I think, would have to be talking about salvation, the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And we know that the, spiritually it is the, the work of Christ. Okay, any questions? We're looking at the word foundation as it relates to 
the, the wheat in the body of Christ. Uh, Christ is the head of the body, so he is not separated. Very important, I think, to keep in mind. He is not separated from the body, right? So if we're talking about the wheat, we're also talking about Christ. And I think we'll see that also a little bit later. Now, here's another aspect of this which I wasn't uh, focusing too much on before. And that's the, the judgment side of the foundation. Okay? The body of Christ that is pointing primarily to the, to the wheat, I'm sorry, to uh, Antichrist, the tares. Romans 15, verse 20. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Isn't that interesting? And who would that be? Building on another man's foundation. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. This might help. Therefore, leaving the prince, yeah, exactly, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Now, again, this is not surprising, is it? We know that we're looking for the gospel and the word foundation. It is pointing to Christ, but it could also point to Antichrist, right? Because that would be the, uh, the, the judgment aspect of it. And there we have the gospel. Uh, Revelation 13, 8. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Now the word from there, uh, it is mostly translated from but it can also be translated of, out of, or by. And I thought that that was interesting. Uh, and hopefully that might help us to interpret the, the phrase foundation of the world a little bit better. <clears throat> Let's, okay, now, here it is. Luke chapter 11, verse 50. This is where I believe God answered. And you know, I've looked at this verse, or these verses, a number of times, and I just didn't see it right away. Uh, this is where God, I believe, He is answering uh, the question. He is defining what the foundation of the world is. Now look at this very carefully. In Luke chapter 11, verse 50, that the blood of all the prophets, which was, which was shed from or by, out of the foundation of the world, <clears throat> in this case would be Antichrist, false prophets, other foundation, may be required of this generation. And then he continues, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 51. From, notice the same uh, language again. The blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah. So what does that tell you? We're talking about the time aspect of foundation of the world you see how God here I believe he is defining when the foundation of the world is spiritually let's look at it again verse 50 the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel was Abel the first martyr yeah was there a church at the time that Cain killed Abel. Now think about this before you answer. Was the church, that is the world, spiritually? Yes, it was. Thank you, Eric. It was because Cain killing Abel is a picture or a type of the unsaved in the body killing their fellow believers. And even though there were no uh, formal uh, congregation or gathering nevertheless the two that's why I think again God uses the number two spiritually <clears throat> right Cain and Abel uh, they would have been the church and and so spiritually we see how the unsaved in the body typified by Cain rising up and killing Abel his brother and that would have been 
uh, spiritually, if you think about it, the foundation of the world, the time when the, the body of Christ, now technically we can take that all the way back into eternity past because God is from everlasting. However, uh, as far as the, the actual shedding of blood, the shedding of blood, and that's why, you know, I mentioned before, this is a very challenging area, the foundation of the world, because most people... Uh, today they look at that and they're thinking Christ literally died and shed blood. Now that's a question I raised uh, the other day for someone, and then they couldn't. Uh, I mean, they, 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 someone who believed that Christ literally shed blood before the foundation of the world. Yeah, I used to think the same way too. Uh, but you see, if that's the case, then well, what about the prophets? Did the prophets exist before the foundation of the world? Did they shed blood? No. No. And we can't force the Bible to say that. You heard that from Family Radio. And that's what I think happened to a, a lot of people, myself included. We we listened to someone who appeared to be very knowledgeable, and, and you know, they were in, in many areas. Uh, and yet we took things for granted. Maybe they were very uh, you know, persuasive in their approach. But that's why again Lord willing we have to read the Bible for ourselves we have to make sure we can't take things for granted uh, so from the blood of Abel Abel therefore is a type of the martyr the first martyr the first one who was killed and or on be well not on yeah the first one who was killed in the body of Christ now if Abel was killed well then guess what so was Christ spiritually and I'll see if I can expand on that. What about Zacharias? What about Zacharias? The name means remembered of Jehovah. Why do you suppose God stopped at Zacharias? Now look at the verse. The blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world. From the blood of Abel. That's the foundation of the world. Onto the blood of... Why not the blood of John the Baptist? <clears throat> Why not the blood of uh, Stephen? But you see, that's where, again, the, the names, uh, sometimes they come into play because remembered of Jehovah. If you go into the book of Revelation, when the those that were slain for the word of God, they're saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? They, <clears throat> they are, that's the time when God remembered his people he remember the covenant now he is going to bring judgment on Babylon and that's why I believe Zacharias is typified as the last of the martyrs uh, he was not the last martyr but spiritually he is pointing to the very last person who would be slain that would be who that would be the church right in tribulation the body of Christ the two witnesses that were killed Okay, so can you begin to see? Now this is the key, I believe. That that's that's the heart of the uh, the phrase, the foundation of the world. If we want to look at it spiritually, it is from the foundation of the world, from the beginning of the creation, not the literal creation per se, but rather the creation that God formed. That is the church. Okay, so that would be looking at the time aspect of it. But also built into this verse, I believe, is the nature of it. And that's where, uh, let me share some additional verses, and, and hopefully you might see what I'm offering. Uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one? Now the next couple of verses is all about the... Uh, the prophets being killed, the fathers killing the prophets, and that ties into Luke chapter 11 that I just offered, uh, Revelation 18 verse 24, and in her, that's Babylon, in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that was slain upon the earth. Well, we just read that, Luke chapter 11 verse 50, the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world, beginning with Abel, right? beginning with Abel, ending with Zechariah, who is a type 
of the last martyr. Uh, Matthew 13, verse 35. Uh, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables and other dark other things which were which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Well, the foundation of the world, I'm proposing again, is the, the start of the body, the creation of the body of Christ. And from the very beginning, we see that. From the very beginning, already Satan was active killing the prophets. Killing the prophets. Habakkuk 3.13, There went forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation which thine, uh, with thine anointed thine anointed that wouldest that woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck what I'm offering here these verses are going to be looking at wait a minute where am I uh, I hope I'm not repeating some of these verses all right let's get to Ezekiel 13 verse 14 let me look at, uh, pick it up from the, uh, the latter part. So that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall. Now, which foundation? Okay, thank you, Eric. Which foundation is God talking about here? Is this judgment or salvation? The foundation shall fall. Now keep in mind, we looked at the, the foundation related to salvation. Yeah, it would have to be judgment. But notice it's talking about the foundation. Now Christ is the foundation. So what is the judgment side then of foundation? Yeah, exactly. It has to be anti-Christ. Right. The foundation that is Christ, but in the in the context of judgment, it's looking at God's judgment on Babylon. That's the foundation. Remember, another man's foundation. We're not to build on another man's foundation. Isn't that interesting? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 15. Shout against her round about. She hath given her hand her foundations are fallen what does that remind us of when we see the word fallen her foundations are fallen before you answer that ezekiel chapter 30 verse 4 and the sword shall come upon egypt and great pain shall be in ethiopia when the slain shall fall in egypt and they shall take away her multitude and her foundations shall be broken down. Who's God talking about? The foundation that is Antichrist. When does that happen? In the day of the Lord. Revelation 14 verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Can you see that? Babylon is the foundation. It is Egypt. God is going to discover her foundation and it would fall. Paul. Any questions? Uh, Job chapter 4, verse 19. How much less than them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth. Foundation in the dust. Babylon is fallen. The foundation, the wall. That's another uh, word I think we see that relates to the, the fall of Babylon in judgment. Her walls are falling down, typified by the, uh, the walls of Jericho that came down. Okay, so we, we, I've offered some verses on the foundation that is Christ in the context of judgment. And we are seeing also, I believe, the foundation, the judgment side of foundation having to do with the false prophets. Uh, this didn't post, I just, okay. What about, let's look at some additional verses. Now, again, I said, as I said before, bear with me on this. And then, Lord willing, I'll, I'll try to summarize uh, when I'm done here. Matthew 23, verse 31. Mormon Bishop, hi, welcome. Uh, posted, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, a great city. Yes. 
Yeah, that's uh, Revelation 14, in verse 8. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Matthew 23, 31. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. The blood of the prophets uh, shed from the foundation. And then we're going to come back to the verse, the famous verse, that Christ was the Lamb slain from the foundation of of the world. Matthew 23, 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men, and scribes, some of them ye shall kill and crucify. Who are the ones that are killing the prophets? Well, Cain, right? Spiritually, he killed Abel at the very beginning, the foundation of the world. Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Yeah, exactly, Eric. Cain is Abel, he is Babylon. I'm sorry, he is uh, Antichrist, uh, who is Babylon. So Jerusalem is the one killing the prophets. And that's going to get into the, uh, the nature aspect of the phrase that I mentioned uh, earlier. Luke chapter 11, 47. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers kill them. Romans 11, verse 3. Lord, they have killed thy prophets. The reason, again, I'm sharing these verses is to try and tie back into Luke chapter 11, verse 50, and also verse 51. 1 Thessalonians 2, 15. Who both kill the Lord Jesus. Now, remember what I said before? When you kill the prophet, G, uh, Jebus, Jerusalem, the land of Canaan, Babylon, yeah. Where do you see that name, Eric? Did I post that on the screen? Jebus? Jebus? Oh, okay. Yeah, so the... Uh, what I mentioned before is that those who kill the prophets, if you kill... The body. That, well, let's put it this way. When you kill Christ, do you kill the body of Christ? Can you kill the body without the head? If you kill the body, that was Jerusalem name before it was... Okay, all right. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, very interesting. When you kill the body, do you kill the head? Yes, and I think vice versa. Uh, there's a verse coming to mind but I don't remember exactly hmm and I think we talked about that before um, so when you kill the body of Christ you also kill the head you have to right because the head is not going to exist without the body that's why there's a an intimate relationship I believe between Christ and the body he is the head of the body so all these prophets that are killed by Babylon, beginning with Cain, they typify Jerusalem coming against the church, against the body of Christ, and killing the prophets. And if they kill the prophets, guess what? They also, they are killing Christ. And I think I can prove that, Lord willing. Hold on one second. Matthew 25, 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Belly, I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not unto the, not to one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. Can you see the tie in there? If you feed the body of Christ, then you are feeding Christ. If you kill the body of Christ, then you are killing Christ. Just the same. Acts chapter 9 verse 4. Here's another uh, tie in, I believe. And he fell to the earth, talking about Saul, who became Paul. And heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Was Saul persecuting Christ? Literally? He, well, yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, spiritually he was, right? But literally, was he persecuting Christ or was he, was he persecuting the Christians, the body of Christ? He was persecuting the body of Christ, right? He was, uh, you know, coming against the church and then he 
um, he would destroy the church, lead them captive, and, and you know basically destroy. He was coming against the church, not Christ, you know historically, but spiritually, and that's why we read here, "Why persecutest thou me?" So if you persecute the body of Christ, then you are doing it to Christ himself. So when Cain killed Abel, well then guess what? Spiritually he is also killing Christ. And that's why I believe we can read into that verse that Christ is a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The church has always been killing the church. And Christ is the head of the body. So yeah, uh, even though there might be a tie in there, the fact that he was, uh, when we're looking at it from the vantage point of creation, that he is the lamb slain, it's not that he literally shed blood before the foundation, before the creation of the world, but rather that in God's mind or God's eye, he was going to go to the cross. So it was already a done deal. God had made provision for him to uh, go through the atonement and be successful. God was going to uh, bring back the captivity of his people. So we can't look at this literally and say, well, Christ died from before creation, before God created the world. I don't think the Bible is teaching that. But yet, many people, if we look at these verses literally on the surface, uh, not allowing God to define the terms, we might come to that conclusion. So that's the first uh, <clears throat> conclusion that I offered looking at foundation of the world is that God had planned for Christ to go to the cross uh, but at the same time the foundation of the world I think we're seeing here the Jebusites the church Babel yeah is spiritually and, and that's probably Lord willing a more accurate picture anyone disagree with that that the creation of the world that Christ is a lamb slain from the creation of the world or the foundation of the world is looking at the fact that the church has been destroying the church beginning with Cain. And God there I think was defining the phrase foundation of the world. Now a couple of more verses uh, maybe not directly tying in but the same might be in view. Acts 15:18 when we look at the beginning of the world no one to known unto God all his works from the beginning of the world the beginning of the world is a parabolic language again if we're looking at it spiritually to the uh, the church or the formation of the body of Christ and to make all men see uh, Ephesians 3 9 what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God. And here's one more. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 21. Looking at the, uh, the tribulation to come. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. When is the beginning of the world? The foundation of the world? I'm proposing here that it is when Cain killed Abel that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah. Jesus is not the true Messiah of the scriptures. He was not in the heart of it. Alright, can you hold off on the, uh, the posting? I want to finish this study uh, and offer a conclusion and then we can open for uh, a discussion. Alright? Okay, thank you. Alright, now I'm just going to summarize a couple of things. I'm not going to get into the world of the earth, but I will give you uh, some links uh, to consider. Uh, Bible studies there where God is using the, uh, the phrase or the word world or earth uh, spiritually to point to the church. From time. And that's how I'm looking at foundation of the world right now. Uh, the nature and the timing of it. The timing has to do with the establishment of of the body of Christ. The establishment, the time when the church came into existence, that's also creation, the formation. Uh, and then you have the nature of it, it is influenced by Antichrist, the false prophets. So can you see that? I'm going to go back to Luke chapter uh, 
uh, 11 again. And when we look at from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, we, we see the timing of it having to do with uh, when Cain killed Abel. But Cain is a picture of whom? Cain is a type of the unsaved, right? It is a type of Babylon. We said that. So therefore, yeah, exactly, Eric. We see the time, the foundation of the world, the church uh, has been killing the church, Jerusalem killing the prophets from the very beginning, from the, the blood of Abel. But then Abel is a type of the wicked. So it is the wicked and the church. It is Antichrist. That foundation, the foundation of another. You see that? From the foundation of the world. And in the context of judgment, it would have to be a looking at Babylon coming against the body. Now here is the, uh, I just want to show you some of the studies. Uh, when you have some time, if you're interested, you can go to the, uh, to the website, uh, BereanStudies.net, and look at the foundation of the world. That's the first study. Um, I didn't say, did I say Abel was a type of the wicked? If I did, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant to say Cain is a type of the, the unsaved church, the wicked. Uh, sealing before hurting. You know, sometimes when you're uh, speaking like this, you, you could end up saying things that you didn't mean to say. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Okay, well, this is actually posting the links. I'll just read the name of the studies. And these studies is only the try and because I don't want to get into the, uh, the spiritual nature of the world or the earth. And I think they're all talking about the church. So we have some studies here, some links. That should take you straight to those the studies on the website. And then here's the last one. The heart of the earth. Okay, so we have a foundation of the world, sealing before hurting, dust of the earth, heaven and earth, and so on, right? Yeah, we're talking about the church, that is, that is Babylon. The world, the earth, the city, the nations, the sea, all of that spiritually pointing to, to the church. Okay, now let me pose the conclusion that I have here for this study, and we'll, uh, we'll open for uh, questions or comments. It's a very short conclusion. As a follow-up to the first study, it's becoming clearer by God's grace that foundation of the world or the earth is speaking of the body of Christ. So Christ being slain from the foundation of the world, the foundation of the world, the foundation of the earth, that is the creation of the body. And yet the body is put to death by the body. Now this is not, it may not be a, uh, an easy area to, to understand. I realize that. I realize that. First of all, we, we have to look at the, the earth or the world uh, spiritually, and we have to consider the timing of it. If the world is parabolic language for the church, well then the foundation of the church was not before the, the creation of the earth. That makes sense? And that's why I, I mentioned before, when we look at Luke chapter 11, verse 50 and 51, God is defining. Let's look at those. Uh, let me post uh, those verses again. I think they're very important. And that should be the summary of everything that we've talked about here that I've offered. All right, Luke chapter 11. I'll just post these two verses and then we'll close that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world and I mentioned that the word from there could also be translated as out of or of or by okay so technically if you want to use the word by you can say that the blood of all the prophets which was shed by the foundation of the world which would also be correct I believe because it is pointing to Antichrist it is pointing to Babylon who killed Babylon who killed the church and then in verse 51 where God I think here is defining the terms the timing of it from the blood of Abel from the blood of Abel 
unto the blood of Zacharias. So here we have the first martyr and the last martyr, showing that Babylon has always been active in killing the prophets. Okay, uh, hold on one second. <clears throat> 